uh, if somebody is a complainant. Yes, my dear. I think in general we require that uh, his testimony be based on personal knowledge. Uh, may we know whether these accusations are based on personal knowledge? I heard this like, myself during when, during when her testimony. And then I did this on record, which is uh, certified too by the house. And then, of course, in the other. No, but is that personal knowledge? Does that meet the test of personal knowledge? Because you simply heard it. I think it is on record, Your Honor. Yes, it but is still. Uh, you're just submitting records and documents, but uh, not based on personal knowledge. For example, in the case of the five million dollars, yes, you Honor. knew personally that uh, it is uh, fully accounted for, and then you dispute or belie the statement of uh, the commissioner with respect to the five million dollars as a debt, as reported by her in the hearing of the House of yes, Representatives. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Then, uh, in the opinion of this representation, that is personal knowledge. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So what uh, you did is uh, you researched this. I researched this. Because from the moment, may I, may I, this I be misunderstood, or this I, the first time that I heard about Miss uh, Heidi Mendoza saying that that was, I think, uh, during the testimony in the Senate, she said that the COA system was rotten, that the COA auditors are corrupt. That's and then later on, a friend of mine called up, you know, Art, sabi niya, binato kami doon. Because it, I, uh, I'm, the, the basic question for that is, why is it that I am testifying against her. Nang binato yung kuha bus, at yung kaibigan ko mismo na kasakay sa bus, ay halos tinamaan. Ay nagalit po ako. Bakit naman? Sinabi niya kahit, sabi na yung, ang sinabi doon, sinabi ni Heidi Mendoza, na ang mga kuha, ang mga kuha chairman, mga kuha directors, mga kuha commissioners, are not supporting her. Kaya binato yung aming bus. The one was not maybe that's all. And because of that, I feel, I did not like that. Starting that time, I went, you know, I was former auditor of the Senate, the 8th Congress, from 1989 to 1983. So I have established reports with these people here, even with the archives here, even the security guards, accountants, and all the workers, they know me here. That is why I can secure, with your respect, with, uh, with the proper uh, approach. I was able to secure all this. I have records of the things that are relevant to this investigation in, in my part, possession, uh, certified to by the archive uh, director. Uh, Congressman Gales. Part of the accusation, for example, with respect to unfitness, is the accusation that she entertained a self-confessed plunderer, retired Colonel George Robusa. Yes, indeed, yes. Yeah. Uh, did you personally witness that? I was not there. But the moment that Raposa entered her office, I got 26, 26 texts, cell phone texts. So you were not there? I were was not there. there. How about the audit findings on the Makati City financial transaction? Yes. Uh, do you have a copy? The moment I started. Do you have a copy of the financial audit? I don't have the copy. But I went to Sandigan so, because I was former auditor of Sandigan Bayan. Do you have a copy of uh, the Supreme Court decision negating that audit finding? I will. Ha I have that with me. Are you at the house? But Everything that I presented here are duly supported by evidence. Can you elaborate on that on the Makati uh, City audit? In the case of Makati audit, <coughs> this is where uh, the audit process should have been observed. And when you observe audit process, you must be familiar with auditing rules and regulations, especially in the point of procurement. When you accuse an agency of overpricing, overpricing, you must compare only those that are similar. Do not compare different items. When it is 
similar. I mean, <coughs> do not compare a generic with a branded. Do not compare a generic medicine to a branded medicine. Do not compare gold with silver. Do not compare the kind of furniture that you are buying for a barangay office to an office in a high class municipality or city. I look into the decision. I even also read the article of, uh, he has been uh, a good writer, Solita Golas Monsur, and he criticized that. When he said that there was an irregularity, the hell, pariho the two warehouses, ang address ng mga nagbit. In my own experience as a consultant of different agencies, pharmaceutical company, furniture companies, clothing material companies. There are companies who usually house their products in a prowling area. Only one warehousing company like that. That one warehousing company accommodating different products of different companies. Sometimes there are 50 companies in that industry. When they say that you sulat daw ng bidder of this the same, that, that is defective. That would not always be erroneous. Because there are companies within a very compound containing the products of different companies. Anyway, in a pharmaceutical product, for example, this uh, metro drug company. <coughs> this is a highly computerized uh, pharmaceutical warehousing company that they can accommodate all kinds of products different, coming from different countries. Now, why do pharmaceutical companies deposit their products there? Kasi nakokontrol nila ho yung pan eh. Ang temperature. So when you will see that all this, for example, if uh, it, an agency will say, why is it that uh, itong bidder ay galing sa isang address lang? Hindi nila alam yung, hindi alam ng auditor na yung address na yun ay contain different companies product to different companies. Kaya an auditor must be resourceful. Before going into conclusion, magtanong-tanong ka muna, siguro magbasa-basa ka muna. At ang isang kulang kay Heidi Mendoza, na pag binasa niya ang rules and regulation, at itong nakita niya, nakukungkul siya agad may violation, remember the rules and regulations, and all the laws in this land are subject to review by the court. What you should read as an auditor is, and you should read the jurisprudence, read the decision of the court, most especially this decision of the Supreme Court. It is that that will rule the case, not the rules and regulation, not even the law. Because the court interprets the law. That interpretation is usually the governing factor. Yan ang kulang kay Hedy Mendoza. Nakita yung rules and regulation violated? No. The court will see otherwise. Because subject to the country first, Sandigan Bayan, he appealed Mr. Court, he affirmed yan, ay mali eh. In the case of Makati po, Mr. Chairman, sinabi na overpricing. Sinabi niya itong product eh, overpriced dahil ganito ganito. Ba't ang kinumpere niya yung ibang produkto eh? It is like comparing the cost of an orange, the cost of an orange produced in America to the cost of orange produced in Baguio. Pag imported dyan, mahal yan. Kung local, mora yan. For example, bumili yung Makati City ng furniture. Uh, I don't know, that Makati City Hall. Magandang City Hall yan, magara. Siyempre, the commercial capital of this country must be able to reflect the kind of products that we have in this country. So when you go there, makikita magara yung, mag yung mga products. Now, if you ask, oh, this is very expensive, where do you permit you to do support? You import it. If you come to the, you, dip, you compare different items, different products, different nature, wala. Mali yung uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Pisana, I think Mr. Uh, uh, you have uh, said your piece.
Yes, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you so much. Yes, now, uh, uh, the chairman will ask questions, perhaps. Maybe we will uh, give a chance to the uh, nominee to answer the uh, accusations or to refute the uh, allegations of uh, yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. especially uh, on incompetence. Oh, yes. I, I have studied it very well. Right. Well, let, let us yes. give a chance to. Very well. Honorable chair and members of the commission and appointment. Thank you very much for giving me the time to expose the lies and the opposition to a crusade which we have long started. First, let me show you a book the oppositor has given me with the following dedication. Sometime in June 1, 2011, yes. to Madam Commissioner Mendoza, truly the best Arnie <coughs> Poa. Can I use my Class, Truly the best are in Poa. You are one of them. But divine intervention brought you back because he really considered you as the best for the time. Thanks sincerely. The signature of the depository. This was sometime in June 1, 2011. I pause and may I continue. He questioned my confidence. Your Honours, if I may refresh your memory, I thank you for initiating the investigation on the armed forces. You, in fact, has helped a lot in shedding the irregularities and the extent of impunity within the AFP, with you leading the interrogation of Nelson, General Ligot, and General Garcia. Is it not that one of the auditors during that time is my oppositor, Arturo Pesana? In fact, it is for the same reason that George Rabusa filed a case against him, and he has the reasons to do so. On reasons of my confidence, I believe I do not need to be a resident auditor. I do not need to be a director, neither do I need to be an assistant commissioner. What I need, perhaps, is an experience. In my more than 20 years of an audit, as an auditor, I filed several cases while the Makati case, two of which have been dismissed by the Supreme Court. Your Honours, the case against the Kandaw, the autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao, which is a very difficult and a special case audit, was affirmed by the Supreme Court. It was your humble public servant that initiated, completed the audit, filed the case, and appeared on several cases despite the threats and the pressures before the court. And I'm thankful to the court because it was affirmed by the Supreme Court. Aside from this, Your Honor, I have filed several cases. I leave it to my oppositor to review or renew his memory if he has afforded to file any case at all. In my 20 years of experience, I have filed more than 10 cases as far as I can tell. He is questioning my style. He said it is a deviation of audit procedure. I say it is conviction. He say it is arrogance. I say it's committed dedication. I did not deviate from the rules. I stand. I gave my name and the credibility before the reports that I have written. I didn't back away. I didn't give up. I resigned, but when I was needed by the country, I gave up. I raised, I raised, I raised to the challenge and face the Honorable Commission of the Senate and the House. As regard the UN thing on the $5 million, Honorable Members of the Commission and Appointment, we have the supporting papers to back up. But as I have said, the investigation was incomplete. And in fact, I clarify this. I make this very sure during the pre-conference pre before the hearing. I told no less than Congressman Tupas, the investigation is not yet completed. While we have some leads and while we have some documents, we couldn't go to the conclusion. But you know, the questions were raised just the same, and I, 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 I raised the answer. But also, may I give some clarification? The answer of the UN then, that it was not missing and it was on their part, pertains to a separate tranches of, of UN um, transfers. In fact, it is because of our initial observation that UN decided to stop transferring the money and keep it for the meantime. On the other uh, allegation about 
my incompetence. Your Honors, I was the only Filipino invited by the GAO of the U.S. This is the Supreme Audit Institution of the U.S. to address the auditors because they believe, and if I may go, modesty aside, Jim was very a former senator of the U.S. mentioned. I have been an auditor for the past long, long years. I have not seen an auditor as competent and as courageous as I did Mendoza, and that's why I was given the chance to understand. I think it will be unfair if other countries will recognize my competence. But this oppositor, who was the auditor of AFP then, who was the one who said that I am one of the best of all one, will be heard by his honorable court. I never lied. When he said that uh, George Rabusa went to my office, I have the documents. I have the log book. He went to my office, but your honors, immediately as I have introduced him to the director of the field investigation office, I left my office and joined the meeting with assistant uh, commissioner Glo Cornejo and one of the directors of COA. We are then carefully analyzing the reshuffling of the auditors, but of course it is up to the approval of the chair. In fact, and I remember it very well, I returned to my office past seven o'clock. And so it is never correct that I entertained George Rabusa from the time he went to my office up to seven o'clock. I didn't, I intentionally did not handle the issues that he is raising because I'd like to preserve the independence and objectivity of the commission. Honorable members of the chair, honorable members of the commission and appointment, and honorable chair of this commission, you know exactly how difficult it is to fight those who are in power. You know exactly how difficult it is to expose irregularities and lies. I have paid them dearly, but I have never regret. I am willing to continue, and therefore I ask your understanding, I appeal to your conscience, I appeal to your degree of judgment to judge me by my experience and to unfold further the intentions, the evil, the lies that are behind the motives of the oppositor. Thank you very much, Your Honours.